Kawasaki disease is characterized by non-remaining fever and signs of mucocutaneous inflammation. As well, there are many other less characteristic but common symptoms that may cause confusion, such as diarrhea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. The fever caused by Kawasaki disease is persistent, with body temperatures typically staying above 38.5 degrees Celsius and intermittently spiking above 40. The fever does not respond well to paracetamol or NSAIDs, but characteristically remits within 48 hours of appropriate treatment. Although no laboratory findings are diagnostic, elevated CRP or ESR can contribute to a diagnosis of incomplete Kawasaki disease when only two or three clinical criteria are present. If the patient has low platelets, then a consumptive coagulopathy or an alternative diagnosis should be considered. If coronary artery disease is not detected initially, then echocardiography should be repeated in the subsequent weeks. Once the diagnosis is made, treatment with high-dose aspirin and intravenous gamma globulins should be initiated as soon as possible. When given within 10 days of onset of the illness, intravenous immunoglobulin therapy has been shown to greatly reduce the risk of coronary artery aneurysms. Glucocorticoids may be beneficial in certain high-risk patient groups, but are generally not part of the initial therapy for most patients. Varicella and inactivated influenza vaccines are suggested for children on long-term aspirin therapy to prevent Rye syndrome. Following treatment, live virus vaccines are usually delayed for 11 months because immunoglobulin therapy dampens the immune response. However, in the event of an outbreak, the child should receive the necessary vaccine. Reimmunization at a later date would then be required if adequate antibody titers are not achieved.